so much for joining. Presentation slide. We're, today we have a really exciting and special e-commerce unpack episode. We're joined by Niels Flores, who's the VP of Strategic Development at Channel Engine. And I'll give Niels a little bit more time to introduce himself and kind of talk through what exactly he's working on on the Channel Engine side. But really the focus of today is going to be launching on online marketplaces. So just to recap and give you a little understanding of ShipBob and who we are, if you're not familiar with us, um, we are really your omni-channel fulfillment partner in all things retail, marketplace, and direct-to-consumer. One fulfillment platform and one fulfillment engine dashboard powers all of your e-commerce and retail fulfillment. We've got 100 plus sales channels and integrations ready to go out of the box. We also have custom integration capabilities as we are an API-based platform. And we're nearing about 60 plus fulfillment centers right now in the uh, globally. So we're about 30 plus in the US and then we're also in the Netherlands where Channel Engine happens to be based. We're in Poland, we're in Australia, we're in Canada and we have about five warehouses in the UK. So we can support both localized international marketplace fulfillment and US fulfillment plus global fulfillment. Great. Um, okay, and then finally I will let Niels, take over from here. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Niels, if you want to jump on with your slides. Yes. Thank okay. you. Just going to pop them up here. And there we are. Let's see. Where are you? Here you are. So yeah, uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, great uh, to have everybody and uh, thank you for the invite uh, as well. Um, so today I want to take you through the uh, a bit of about launching on marketplaces and of course what we see happening in the marketplace space uh, because there's a lot of let's say developments uh, that we see all, all over the world um, and th these are also what we're going to see uh, well in different regions in the world when they're all going to leap over sometime. Um, so Kicking it off uh, here with uh, showing you first, who am I? So as uh, Meg said, I am Niels Flores, VP of Strategic Development within Channel Engine. Uh, my role is to look at uh, all the regions in the world, look at, okay, what's happening over there and which channels should we keep an eye on uh, to also make sure they have integrations with. Um, and I've been in the space for, well, about 10 years now, uh, seeing all these markets develop and especially also helping Channel Engine uh, set up the sales and partnership organization around the world. So showing you a bit about Channel Engine. So Channel Engine is a e-commerce and marketplace management suite. So we connect with over 950 marketplaces worldwide. Uh, and you can think of uh, traditional marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, uh, but also a bit of newer channels like uh, social commerce channels um, are also now uh, being integrated. Um, we were founded in 2013 in the Netherlands, uh, in the city of Leiden, uh, and now have about 250 uh, marketplace professionals all around the world. And you can well see them in all the offices uh, that we have. So in the Netherlands, in Germany, New York, Toronto, uh, Singapore, Dubai, and Melbourne, Australia. Um, it also helps our business because as these days, e-commerce never sleeps. So we ha have a round the clock 24-7 uh, support uh, as we have all these support centers all over the world um, and also helps us support sellers, not only in one region, but in any region in the world. And besides that, because we have a really growth model within Channel Engine, we have a customer success team that's dedicated to helping our clients grow on marketplace and other third-party sales channels. So that's a bit about Channel Engine. And why we really started developing uh, Channel Engine is because we really saw that, of course, drive in the past years, or let's say past decade, were from traditional retail to e-commerce. Um, well, Everybody felt that, right, with all the uh, online, bus online uh, uh, business coming up there. But then there was an even bigger shift to online marketplaces. Uh, so there was right, retail to e-commerce, e-commerce to, uh, to uh, marketplaces. 
And that was a big opportunity, but it also brought a lot of challenges, right? Making sure your stock's up to date, making sure your orders are synchronized, making sure your content's also synchronized in the right formats with all these channels, and making sure you stay ahead of the competition. So that's why we really started developing a channel engine. And we saw this happening, all these trends, because of, well, three main uh, reasons here. So one, right? Most product searches started taking place on marketplaces, whereas traditionally it took place on, on well, channels like Google. Then large e-commerce pla uh, platforms, uh, you have a few here, right? Tesco, uh, Target, H&M, they started turning into a marketplace, right? So they didn't take their own stock anymore on, uh, on hand. And the last one, and I think that's now actually pushing the lever even faster, is the that social commerce channels uh, or channels that generally generate clicks like Google, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, they're now all changing their models into a marketplace model. So all these different, uh, uh, yeah, these different trends and these different things are happening. And that's all pushing, let's say, the traffic to marketplaces um, and also well, taking it away from your traditional brand.com stores. But yeah, launching on these marketplaces, it's not easy. And there's a few considerations right, to, to really uh, take into account. One is right, selecting the right channels that really fit your brand. So uh, right, you have the vertical uh, channels, but also the horizontal uh, channels, and also a lot of the local heroes, as we call them. So in many regions in the world, the local heroes is often a good place to start because it's uh, there's not a lot of competition from all the, let's say, international competition that you have. And of course, looking into your verticals with what verticals do you play in and which ones really fit your brand uh, because you're also going to see that you're going to get, well, quicker sales uh, on those channels. And then, of course, mastering the big channels, right? Amazon, global channel, eBay, global channel. Um, all those channels, you'll see that uh, you do have to put a lot more effort in to get your sales up and you have a lot more competition, but you need to take them into your mix. Then making sure that all of your content is really in control, right? Making Because every platform has a different content structure and a setup there. Well, those are two of the uh, important ones, and I'm going to get into a bit of channel engine and how you can manage this, because, of course, you need to have your inventory set up, uh, uh, inventory managed over all the channels, reporting and analytics uh, to have your insights in choosing what you sell when, where, and is it profitable what you're selling on those channels? Because, right, a lot of time that's hard because there's a lot of costs also uh, that you have to take into account. Then on the right side, looking at more on the uh, competition uh, analysis, profitability, uh, ma uh, managing your pricing and promotions over all these different channels, and right, the strategic approach on all these channels. That's, I think, looking into what's your strategy on which channel, right? Are you gonna go uh, in, for on a certain channel with a high discounting uh, strategy, or are you gonna go for profitability? on that channel, right? Uh, th those are a few of the uh, strategies that you can think of. Uh, and it really differs uh, in which region you are, but also the channel that you've chosen. So these are some considerations when going into a channel. Uh, our custom success team often is, this is the first, or these are the uh, pillars that we look at first once we start launching channels. Um, and right then how to manage this at scale. That's, I think, the most important thing here. Of course, managing marketplaces and other third-party sales channels, you have a great opportunity to automate things because there's an, uh, we have, a, just like Channel Engine, we have the automation in place to make sure that you can manage most of the things that you, that you need on marketplaces really into your, the, into your backend systems so that you are fully, uh, so that you can look at optimization on the channels instead of, all the manual things that you have to do because there's a lot that you have to do right inventory management order processing pricing strategies product listings uh, analytics and reporting and of course making sure you are compliant re with your regulations in every region now i want to just take you with me on the journey and show you a bit about really in the back end of channel engine so what can you ex uh, expect uh, from using a channel uh, a system like channel engine 
And I just have to switch to uh, this tab. So this is the channel, uh, so this channel engine, and this is also the dashboard showing you in what you can expect uh, when you're using a channel engine. This is uh, on the left side, you see all your uh, backend systems. So right, uh, what kind of, you can have your PIM system, you can have your uh, uh, e-commerce system or anything that you have on the backend, right? Often your PIM system for your content source, your uh, order management and your stock coming from uh, from the e-commerce systems uh, there or your ERP systems or right from your 3PL or 4PL uh, that, you, that you're working with here. Um, we then take all your content, stock and price into Channel Engine. Here you see all the products uh, in, the, in the system. Um, you can manage them all and see which ones are in, in Channel Engine as well. And then you can distribute these on any channel that you want to sell in, in a channel engine. The interesting part about it is that you can set up every channel the same way. So depending on uh, which channel you want to set up here, you go into the channel and then you have every steps, or you see all the steps from left to right. So you can start with your product selection, selecting connecting your Amazon accounts, for example, and then just fill in your credentials. And then from there, you'll start logging into your account and then setting up, uh, and then you'll be connected with your Amazon seller accounts. From there, you can then choose which products you do and don't want sold on the marketplace. So in this case, you can just put a product in there. And you can check, check anything on any attribute that you have in the system. So based on stock, based on uh, price levels, based on your purchase price, uh, all those kind of things you can select on and then also define which products you do and don't want to sold on your, uh, from your base system. It's important to know that all these rules will also apply for any new assortment that you have in, in, within your system. So if you launch a new assortment and it fits these rules, it will automatically pub be published to those sales channels. From there, every channel has a, has the same or a different categorization, a category tree, and a different content structure per category. So we know in Channel Engine for all of the 950 channels, which products and which uh, content is needed to be mapped and how it should be uh, shared with the marketplace. So here we know here we do the categorization, then we do the content mapping you can see exactly which attributes and which content is required and which, one, which ones are optional here. We do the mapping once in Channel Engine and once it's set up in Channel Engine, then it's also applied for all your products. It doesn't matter if it's one time. That was like so such speedy recovery. We're back. Oh, there we are again. <laughs> so from categorization mapping, then we go into price rules. And in price rules, you can define which price, let's say what kind of, if you want to put a discount on your promotions, or maybe even you want to add prices like shipping fees or any fees that you can think of that, that, are, uh, that you have to take into account here. So you can also think of, for example, your commissions that you have to pay to a marketplace. All those price rules can be applied here. And then uh, we'll take them into account when adjusting your pricing on the marketplaces. We also have dynamic repricers. So to really compete with uh, any seller that's on your platform uh, there, because we know exactly who's selling the same products on the marketplace. And based on that, we can set up different reprices, aggressive one or less, less aggressive reprices. Um, we can also target buy boxes because we all know if you are selling on a marketplace, you always want to target the buy box because anything that well, really sells on a marketplace is always uh, uh, under that buy, buy, bo uh, buy button uh, there. And we also let you see what your competition is on the marketplace. 
So th this is all in the pricing tool of Channel Engine. You can also set multiple reprices. So we can set a very aggressive reprice on maybe your overstock price, uh, products against maybe a less aggressive one on your new products. Once you've followed all these steps, you can go into activations mode and then you can activate, you have a checklist. And then once it's set up, you can then activate the channel and then all the products will be synchronized. Stock will be synchronized, pricing will be synchronized, and you can expect the orders to flow in via channel engine. So this is how we set up one channel. But as I said, every channel has the same setup. So I'll go to Macy's here just as an example. And you see the same setup, same steps, and then you're live on a marketplace. So you're taking going live on a marketplace from weeks or maybe even, even maybe months if you have big assortments to well you can go into uh, live within a day or hours depending on how much availability you have yourself. Once this all works, you're going to see all the orders, shipments, and returns coming in through the order management system right into your backend, so that your uh, warehouse knows or your 3PL, of course, knows how uh, that, that they can handle these uh, orders. And then we make sure synchronization is taking place with all the shipment information needed. So we also have some really nice features in here that's going to help you with in going international, right? Like product translation. Uh, we also have um, a VAT ruling uh, built in there with our partners, our Lara, for example. But we also uh, uh, can, for your content, we can also optimize that, right? Av uh, heightening average order values with creating uh, product bundles. And product bundles can also be automated because we also have AI generated titles and descriptions. And we are also now launching our image generator so that it automatically bundles uh, images for your product bundle, digital product bundles that you have within Channel Engine. Then the most powerful tool that we just launched is also really your statistics and insights, right? Really showing you with what are you selling on a marketplace for what price? And of course, the trends that are happening here. So we're just gonna show you a bit of, uh, so this is also a live well demo environment. So there's also live data going through this because well, one of the, uh, well, challenges with marketplace, you don't have sandbox environments, so everything has to be live always. But you can really see a summary of all your uh, order data, published products, uh, performance of products on certain channels here, um, your return rates, and of course, the most important one, as I just said, also having good insights in, okay, where are you winning the buy box? And what's the, what's the difference between your competition that is winning the buy box here? Because all these metrics are used to really optimize your strategy towards marketplaces. Well, once you've set this all up, as I said, you can select any one of the marketplace, any one of the 950 plus marketplace or other sales channels that we have within uh, Channel Engine. And when you go into our channel library, uh, that's now popping up as we speak, uh, then you can find all of the channels that we have uh, within Channel Engine that is now launching. And that's the only part on oh, no, that. There it is. So you can select on any one of the global countries that we have. So if you're going in, if you want to uh, go uh, live in the US, any other uh, country, North America, Europe, in uh, the Middle East, in APAC, wherever, South America, we have the channels that you can support. We don't have a lot that we're missing, uh, but we do have a lot more on the, on, the, on the roadmap because why? Because there's constantly new marketplace popping up all over the world. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, or there's retailers turning into a marketplace. So whenever that's the case, well, we'll put it on our roadmap and we'll, we'll keep on developing to make sure that we can connect them and make it as easy as possible for you to sell on those channels. So this is uh, that uh, concludes uh, the demo uh, of uh, uh, Channel Engine. Thank you so much for walking us through that. I have a couple of questions just to touch base. I know, and specifically, you called out one in the beginning of the presentation, and I can't remember exactly what you asked me to ask you. So I'm going to have you jog my memory. But other question I had was just the importance of kind of spreading the love around marketplaces and having the ability to standardize operations through Channel Engine when we think about like customer acquisition costs or like even the iOS update a couple of years ago, like 
brands really may need to make sure that they're spreading the love across all their channels so that they're not overexposing themselves in one place. So if you want to just kind of touch yeah. base on that, I think that's really valuable. Yeah, so you don't want to rely on one channel, right? Uh, I think uh, because marketplace change uh, things, right? They change rulings, so it can it can it can also impl uh, let's say that can impact, of course, the entire business case on certain sales channels. Um, I think, right? Just like in US, you rely a lot on Amazon, right? Amazon is the biggest marketplace out there. Uh, but if you really look at does Am is Amazon always the best channel for you as a brand? That's not always the case, because if you look at, let's say, channels in more in maybe in your vertical that are very specific, you're going to see that consumers are also changing their buying habits, right? They're looking uh, when they're looking for DIY products, they're looking for a DIY marketplace, right? For example, if they're looking for fashion products, they often go for the, for the fashion marketplace because it gives them a bit of trust and they expect that they're going to get a better offer uh, there or a, high, a bigger assortment there. So you'll see that the sales also defers and also your margin or let's say your uh, p l also uh, differs per channel as well. So it really, that's why the diversification uh, takes place. And of course, it's a big opportunity, right? Because you can go into new regions. Uh, there's a new consumer base that you can uh, that you can attract as well uh, there. So that's one of them. And I think the, the uh, also good to know that, of course, there's constantly trends happening on marketplaces or on third-party sales channels. So you see, for example, uh, that... Um, you see, for example, that there's um, uh, like social commerce channels is like it's popping up now with TikTok in the US. I know they're having some challenges with uh, uh, the US regulations uh, uh, there, uh, but all those like uh, all the other social channels are also turning into marketplaces and they're also integrating live commerce, uh, influencers, right? And they actually have a even uh, let's say uh, better, let's say a uh, watching or let's say a watch time uh, uh, in minutes than marketplaces um, because people are constantly on the phones, right? So that's also going to be a big one. And I think that's going to take a lot of e-commerce revenue from the traditional marketplaces as well uh, there. Um, I think if you look at a bit of, let's say the actionable, let's say what, what uh, to do, right? Diversify, test on new channels. I think that's 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 an important one uh, there. Um, also, don't always put your entire assortment on one channel, right? That's that's uh, because maybe the, a part of the assortment doesn't fit. Uh, look at your top 20% sellers that fit the channel and start selling there and see, and then build, start building the business case from there. Because so often you have to put a lot of effort in getting your entire assortment online and 80% of it is not going to sell uh, there. So that's a bit of maybe looking into, okay, how to diversify and how to look into, how to make, how to manage all these channels uh, uh, separately as well. And keep an eye on uh, the channels like the social commerce channels uh, that are that are now popping up uh, and the new types of media that you need for those channels, right? Uh, video and uh, because it's, yeah, it's not anymore uh, the traditional only images that you need for your, for really managing all these uh, uh, new channels popping up. I love that call out about TikTok. We are super intimately familiar with TikTok. We are the fulfillment by TikTok backend fulfillment provider. So TikTok's actually yeah. answer to Amazon FBA. So that call out is a really apt one. Like social commerce is a totally different ball game. Making sure that you're limiting your product assortment, kind of focusing on that hero skew, optimizing for virality, understanding that you're going to need some live stream components, some user generated content and some organic content. Um, it's a totally different ball game than mo monitoring or sort of mastering the Amazon or the Shopify game. So that's a really fantastic yeah. call out. Okay. Yeah. Yo, go ahead. No, and I, th I think the other the other one is also because on some channels you can it can go very quickly, right? So make sure that you do have let's say everything set up for success, right? Uh, you need to have a a strong backend uh, uh, set up, and the organization has to understand third party sales channels as well, uh, because once it starts, <laughs> it doesn't. Let's say it, it's not going to dial down. Uh, in, in the short term. Um, and if you don't have a setup correctly, you're going to, well, you're going to kill your own business uh, on the marketplaces because often you just have three strikes and you're out and then you have to have fix a lot of things there. So um, yeah, make sure you're set up for success 
uh, especially on if you look at your backend systems and your automation uh, there, so that you don't have limitations to grow later on when, it, when you do well, hit the jackpot and and start start selling big. Yeah, that's a really that's a, also a great call out. I, I went to a when I was at Etel East last year at Barrett, your chief revenue officer. We did a they, he did a presentation about AI specifically, and it was about how like you know take away the marketplace compliance side of things where you always want to make sure that you're sort of working within this limitations and the restrictions and the requirements of the marketplace. But like, if you want to leverage any predictive analytics tools or any AI, you have to make sure that all of your data is trustworthy. It makes sense. It's clean. It's very much that garbage in garbage out principle. So the idea that you can standardize data, you can move, remove a lot of the manual processes, which can lead to points of failure is just leveraging a fantastic solution. That way you can grow your revenue and grow the number of channels that you're on and leverage predictive analytics tools without necessarily having to grow your team and the amount of eyes or, or sort of hands that are on a project. So, yeah. Cool. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, that's about, let's say also the takeaway and, and uh, well, and I think the, la the, well, of course the technical setup, so make sure you're ready for success uh, and don't un un underestimate, let's say the work it takes to set up, uh, a channel because yes we do a lot with automation but it does still need to need let's say a lot of work to make sure that you are ready on a, a let's say content with your content with uh the technical setup and also with compliance to sell on uh this the sales channels there yeah 100 percent Okay, Niels, thank you so much for all of your wonderful insights um we're gonna send out your contact information so you can get in touch um, if you have any questions for ShipBob, feel free to shoot me an email, um, just my m, glaby at shipbob.com. Niels, thank you so much. It's evening there in the Netherlands, so thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us and provide all these fantastic insights. Um, and we hope to do it again with you soon. Yeah, no, great. And uh, let us know if we need to do a marketplace scan for anybody. Uh, we're happy to do so. Okay, fantastic. All right, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.